welcome to this tutorial on Emma's Collage Pillows. My name is Kim from Kimberbell, and I'm here to walk you through every step of the way of making a, one of the collage pillows that comes on this brand new CD. And this has three different uh, gorgeous designs on it uh, for your 5x7 hoop, 6x10 hoop, 8x12 hoop, even a 9x14 hoop. And uh, this is something that is a brand new technique here at Kimberbell. We are so excited to bring the look of collage applique to your embroidery machine. Uh, for years, people have enjoyed collage applique designs in quilting, the traditional quilting world. Well, we're gonna do it on the embroidery machine today, and you're gonna love how much fun it is to do. Now, to get started, you're gonna want, to, of course, the, the CD itself with the designs, uh, and you're also going to want the proper stabilizers. This is gonna be important to making your pillow just as uh, beautiful as can be. So, the very first one I want you to make sure and have is the Kimberbell Sticky Back Tearaway. Uh, this is one of those uh, stabilizers that you just are gonna absolutely love. Um, this is going to allow you to float your design on top of the hoop when you embroider. So the second thing you're gonna wanna have is something that we call a, a double-sided sticky fusible web. Now there are several brands out there that fall under that category. So find one uh, that uh, your shop carries and uh, that's something that's gonna be important to have. And then a third thing that we feel is very beneficial um, to the success of this type of project is the Kimberbell Wash Away Topper. Okay, this is different than a washable, a wash away stabilizer. This is actually what we would call a topper. So check that out. You'll see how I use that in just a bit. So today I'm gonna to actually do the design called Bless This Nest, and I'm gonna put it on one of our uh, pillow cover blanks. This is one that's done in a, a linen, kind of an oatmeal, creamy color linen. It's beautiful with this gorgeous quilting. Our pillow, uh, pillow cover blank are actually, they, they come with the side seams um, unsewn, okay, so it lays flat. It has the seam, the side seams surged already, so you're gonna have a nice finished edge. It already comes pre-quilted, as you can see here. Look at that gorgeous uh, quilting design. All of our pillow cover, uh, pillow cover blanks have a different type of quilting design. This design itself has more of like what we would call an orange peel. But the thing I love most, besides the quilting of course, is that it has an invisible zipper already sewn into it. So that means I can just lay this on top of my hoop, what we might refer to as floating it on the hoop, and uh, do my design and then just sew up the sides and insert my pillow form. It really is gonna be that easy, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want you to, to see um, in your instructions, this of course is a PDF that comes on your CD, but uh, this will have a little tutorial, um, a little mini tutorial of a heart, just so that you can practice uh, this technique of collage quilting before you actually get started on your project. I would highly suggest that you try out that little heart tutorial first and then jump right into your project. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. All right, so then the next thing that you'll find after that tutorial, of course, is the materials list. I'm gonna show you right here that you will see every material that you need uh, for put, putting this together. It also lists those um, different stabilizers that you'll want to have on hand and the pillow cover blanks. Now, I'm going to look over here at the column of the size that I want to do. Um, as I mentioned before, it comes in four different sizes from a five by seven, six by 10, eight by 12, and nine by 14. I'm actually going to choose uh, the six by 10 design uh, for this project, and it will tell me the different color groups uh, that I am looking for and approximately how many fabric scraps you need of that color. Now I'm going to tell you one, oh, a little tip here. <laughs> Don't use this as uh, your the ultimate guide. I want you to have fun with this technique. I want you to pull out all the scraps, right? How many of you have scraps? Of course you've got 
all kinds of uh, scrap fabric, right? It's hard to throw any of those pieces away. But that's the good news about collage applique is you can take those scraps that you've been holding on to for maybe too long, right? And now's your chance to play with them. Okay, so let me show you some examples of the scraps I had in my stash here. Take a look at those beautiful fabrics. I've got my greens, my yellows, my corals and reds, and I just started pulling, okay? I just said, ooh, okay, I like that color and this looks good together. But here's where I, what I wanna show you. When you are looking for fabric for your collage applique, for me, I think it's nice to have a pretty good blend of fabrics. So for example, I have this one here, and this has a, this is a Kimberbell fabric. It's got a coral background with red on top. Well, I wanted to pull out more red. So then the next one I pulled out was this one that has more red, but has coral on top. Then I went a little bit more on the pink side with red, and then I went almost all coral, and then I found this fun fabric that kind of combined all of it together. These are the fabrics that I am choosing for one of my birds, okay? So you can see how, yes, they blend, they do pretty good, but it's also nice to have some contrast in there too. So therefore, having something like with a little bit of gray in there, and I it pulled in some blue, is gonna be a really fun fabric to play with. Okay, let me show you another example. Here's one where we've got yellows and I've got some, you know, lighter yellows, some more mustard yellows, some yellows that have maybe a little bit more green tint to it. But here's another one that I absolutely love and you know these as batiks, right? Batiks are a great fabric to use with a collage quilting because you can see right there, it's got all these great shades. Well, if I look at those shades and I start pulling in some of the darker colors and some of the lighter colors, this again is gonna be for one of my birds, it's going to be beautiful. So, you know, it's kind of a, a fine balance, you know, it's, okay, do I have it blend too much or do I have it uh, be more, ha have more contrast? It really is a personal preference and that's what makes this so fun. And no two are going to be alike. I could put together all these fabrics, make two pillows out of the same fabrics, but they're going to still look different depending on where I place that fabric, okay? So, oh my gosh, are you ready to dig in? Let's go ahead and uh, uh, do one of these uh, fabrics, prep one of these fabrics with our double-sided fusible web, okay? So, uh, for example, let me go ahead and I'm gonna take this coral fabric here and I think, oh yes, that's definitely gonna be somewhere on my bird, okay? I'm not sure where yet, but I'm going to start with this fabric. And I'm gonna turn it over to the wrong side. So I'm just gonna place this over here on my iron, iron ironing surface, right? Okay, now I'm gonna take a, a little piece of my double-sided sticky fusible web, and there's a paper to it, okay? and you just wanna bend the corner a little bit and peel off that paper backing, okay? Once you've, you've done that, that's going to give you a sticky side, okay? You still have one uh, piece of paper on the other, but then you have one side that is sticky. I'm going to use that to stick it to the back of my fabric, just like so, okay? And I'm gonna give it just a good finger press now, I will tell you that uh, more often than not, I would say, uh, you are also, you know, sometimes, well, let me back up. Sometimes doing a finger press is all you need, and then you'll peel this away a little bit later. But I actually like to put a, a, a dry iron to this only for a few seconds, um, just to make sure there's some good adhesion there, okay? so. Um, let's go ahead and I'm just going to quickly just brush that over. It was that quick. And now I know that's gonna adhere nicely, okay? Now, once I've done that, let me grab my scissors here. All right, so that has a good adhesion to it. Now I can just cut out that square. 
and toss that aside and put it in my pile of scraps. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I've got here so far. <laughs> I'm telling you, I had a lot of fun with this. I could not stop cutting. So there I go. I know that that's going to be part of that bird, all right? But once you've done that, you can see I've then cut it out into these little tiny pieces. Well, not too tiny. They're anywhere from, I don't know, maybe a, an, around an inch. You can make them larger, you can make them smaller. But what I wanna do, as you can see here, is cut out different shapes. There is no right or wrong reason here, my friends. All you do is just curve in and out and in and around, and look at that. I've got a shape, a funny looking shape, but it's a shape, and there's nothing that says I have to have so many, uh, you know, round circles around this, or it has to be this size or not that size. Anything goes. And that's probably why this is so fun and so relaxing. I thoroughly enjoyed this process of digging into my scraps and just cutting out little shapes. Now we recommend cutting shapes that are more curvy, as you can see I'm doing here. Um, if you do uh, straight lines, well, you're gonna see a lot more of um, oh, where it begins and where it ends, should we say. But if you do something that's a little more curved, it just kind of all blends together. In fact, we call it uh, kind of like cutting fingers. So think of it as you're cutting around and oh, there's a finger, cut around, there's a finger, that kind of thing. You'll see why uh, that can be uh, to your advantage here shortly. All right, so I've done that. Let's go ahead and move these stabilizers out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, just make sure that I've got my little piles here. I've divided it up according to, like I said, branches, leaves, the eggs, the robin's egg, all the different parts. And again, I didn't, I didn't count how many I did. I didn't make sure they were all a certain size. I just cut. I just threw caution to the wind and I just cut away and have my pile. Now, another reason why I like giving it just a, a quick little press with a dry iron is because maybe I'm not gonna use all of these fabrics today on this pillow, but I could put them in little baggies and save it for another collage. Um, collage applique design. So there you go. You'll, it won't uh, separate um, the, the paper and the, or the fusible web and the fabric um, if you will iron it together first. Okay, now uh, let's see. I've got my, my piles of fabric and I think I'm ready to go. Are you ready? Now as uh, shown um, in your instructions, you're going to lay your pillow blank flat with the wrong side facing up. The other thing I want to make sure and do is that I am going to make sure that my zipper pull is on the left hand side of me. Now it might look a little bit backwards to you, uh, but for me, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yep, my zipper pull is over to the left. Okay, now your tag, your Kimberbell tag in there, it may be fall, fall on the top, it may fall on the bottom of that zipper. It doesn't matter where it's at, it's not gonna be seen. The important part now is that the zipper pull itself is on the left-hand side, all right? Now, the next thing I wanna do is actually take my ruler right here, and I'm going to measure across my pillow blank. Okay, whatever that measurement is, I'm going to divide it in half. So uh, these may vary, vary in width just a tad uh, because of the quilting on them, but for me, I'm looking at it and I'm going, okay, I, I see a measurement, I see you know, 18, 18 and a half, 19 inches, and then I'm going to, whatever that is, I'm going to divide that in half and create a center line right down the middle, a vertical center line. I'm going to use a water soluble pen to find that. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna measure halfway, 
and this is where it lands. I'm going to mark a couple of places so that when I go to draw my line, I'll just connect my dots, if you will. Okay. All right. So here we go. I'm going to just draw my vertical line going all the way down. Again, water soluble pen. I'm going to mark this line as A. Okay. Okay, so I've marked my vertical line, just like that. Now I want to turn my pillow blank over. I think I've knocked some of my pieces off the table. Oh well. There we go. Now I've got the right side facing up, which also means that my zipper pull is now over to the right side of me. Okay? So looking at your pillow, now your, your zipper pull is over there. Now what I want to do is take the bottom that's closest to you and bring it up and I want you to measure approximately a half of an inch above the zipper teeth. Okay, so this means you're not gonna measure it up here and you're not gonna measure it down here. The zipper teeth are right here. I'm going to measure about a half an inch. Now, don't worry if it's a little bit beyond that or less than that. Just give it, I'm just gonna check my measurement here. I could eyeball it if I want to. <laughs> no big deal, okay? All right, Let's set that aside. Now that I've done that, I have found where uh, my crosshairs are going to go. Okay. And I am going to mark on this fold just a little line here. All right, so I'm going to lift it up just so that I can mark along that line. Just a little bit, okay. And I'm going to label that as my B line, okay. All right, now. You're done with the hardest part. <laughs> and that wasn't hard, right? Okay, we can do this. Now, I have actually already hooped my stabilizer. Again, this is the Kimberbell Sticky Back Tearaway Stabilizer. And uh, what I did was I hooped the stabilizer and then I scored around the outer edge and removed the top coating of paper. So that just leaves me with a sticky back. Thus, sticky back stabilizer, right? And then the first step uh, that you'll want to do, and this is a, a file that is found on your CD as well, is you're gonna locate the crosshairs file and then stitch the crosshairs file directly on top of that sticky stabilizer, all right? Now, that's important because this is gonna help me float my uh, pillow cover blank. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and look at step, here we go, step eight in your instructions, all right? It says to align the fold A, okay, here we go. I've got my A and B line here, right? And I want to align A with the horizontal line here, and I'm going to align B with the vertical line there, all right? So to do that, I'm actually gonna fold this on top of itself uh, with the B, the B line. <laughs> okay, right there is my B line. Right here is my A line. Once again, it says to line the B line <laughs> up to the vertical crosshair and the A line up to the horizontal. All right, well, let's see what happens. All right. I'm going to just shift this right here. Looks like I've lined up my B line along there and my A line right along there. <laughs> okay, that's good. There we go. B line, A line. Because we've got the sticky back, we can just fold this back out and it should be nice and centered. All right, now the next thing I wanna do as mentioned in your instructions, is to look on the back and make sure that if you want to double check, you can go, oh, yep, yeah, that lined up pretty good, pretty good. I say pretty good because nothing's ever perfect, right? Now this one's maybe a little more off than I want, so no big deal. I'm just gonna turn it back over and I'm gonna try it again, okay? So I'm gonna take my B line and my A line. Line them up to those crosshairs. 
stick it down and my A line right here. All right, let's see how I did. Place that on there and ooh, that's looking a little better. And you know what? It's good enough for me. So <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it right there. All right. Okay, now let's get to the real fun part and that is the collage applique. I'm gonna place this on my machine. I have already, there goes some more fabric uh, off the table. I've already loaded my file in. This is the six by 10 size and my uh, the extra fabric from this pillow cover blank is actually going to lay off to the left side of my machine. All right, now the first step is the branch um, and this is going to be what we would call the placement outline. This is telling me this is where you place all that pretty brown fabric here in just a moment. So. Let's go ahead and place uh, my machine foot down and do the branch. All right, so we have finished stitching the placement line here. Now you won't have to always get this out of the hoop each time you go to do this next step, but I wanna be able to show you right now that there's my outline for my branch, okay? And I now get to have some fun with these fabric pieces that I cut. Now for the branch, I just, I used uh, three or four different browns. And again, as you can see, cut them in all different lengths, sizes, widths, you name it. It's all just random, okay? Now the other, uh, the tip I wanna give you is this. When you go to place your fabrics on this area, the branch, okay, I wanna make sure that um, it's at least a quarter of an inch. In fact, I personally like making it more like a half of an inch, larger than the area that I'm gonna cover. This is gonna help when you go to cut away the fabric pieces around the branch a little bit later, okay? So I'm going to, it might look really skinny, but I'm still gonna choose some of these larger pieces uh, to place down on there. Now, because of this is double-sided sticky, I will just peel off this paper. It leaves this sticky residue on the back of it, and I'm going to place it just directly on top of that area, okay? Notice I did not line anything up with that branch. I want it to be beyond the branch. I want it to go further than the branch. And because we're not fusing this to it yet, you're gonna be just fine because it is repositionable. If I didn't like that I had that fabric there, I could just peel it off because it's just got just enough stick to keep it down there for just a moment until um, I really wanna fuse it down later, okay? So this next one, I'm just going to choose, let's choose this darker brown. You just have to just give it um, a little fold and then peel off that paper with your fingertip there. And I've got a stick, so I am just going to place this here. Now, I certainly could place it this way, but you'll notice that I might not have enough extra fabric beyond that branch to really hold on to when I go to cut, so I'm choosing to do it this way. All right? All right, let's go ahead and here I've got a larger piece got my stick I'm just gonna place that down on top all right I'm going to go back in fact well, let's go to this smaller one uh, there is no rhyme or reason for what I'm doing except that I just I, I'm just having fun with it in fact if I look at that now and I go you know I want a little something extra in there well no problem I'm gonna take one of my other pieces a different shade, a different fabric, okay? And I'm gonna peel that off. And I think that might be too much of one fabric showing, so I'm just gonna layer it. Why not, right? I'm gonna just layer it right on top. You see, this is just called having fun and playing with fabric. <laughs> oh my goodness, here we go. There's another one, and 
you know, one thing I realized as I was doing this is that you're going to use a lot more fabric than you think <laughs> because, you know, you just want nice, good variety. Now, it looks pretty funky right now, doesn't it? You're going, okay, that doesn't look like a branch, Kim. <laughs> oh, you just wait, <laughs> you just wait, because pretty soon the magic will happen, right? And I'm gonna place this, it's nice, and snug on there, okay? I'm not doing anything with my iron quite yet. I don't wanna fuse this because imagine if I fuse it right now, we're gonna have a funny looking branch. What I wanna do instead is actually put it back onto the bed of the machine, do my next step, which is a tack down line of that same branch, and then you'll see where it goes from there, okay? So let's go ahead and place it back on your machine. and stitch our next step. Before I do this one though, there's one other thing to note. You wanna make sure that this stick is keeping everything down, okay? It's, it's something that you don't wanna have a little piece of your fabric flipping up and risk the chance of your presser foot catching onto that fabric. So you're going to want to keep a close eye on it. Now the other thing you can do, and this is where our water uh, soluble topper can come into play, is you could actually, at this point, cut a piece of this off. Okay, you just need a little strip, right? And you could place that over the top so that it becomes a barrier. Okay, it becomes this plastic coating that the stitches will stay on top and nothing's going to flip your fabric over. So you could put that on there. If you do, you're gonna want to use some paper tape to keep it in place. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna go ahead and do that because you know, I just, I'm not sure. I don't wanna risk my uh, fabric flipping up. If that happens, you can, can kind of have a mess. And it's no fun, right? So I'm just gonna place this there. Now, because it's water soluble, I can easily, for one, tear this away from it, okay? Or um, if I have any extra pieces left of it after I've torn it away, then I can also um, just use a little bit of spritz of water or something, and it'll come right off. Okay, so I've laid that down. Again, it's not absolutely necessary. But if you want to uh, make sure that everything stays in place and, and doesn't lift up with your presser foot, I suggest the water soluble topping, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do our tack down stitch, which is gonna look just like the same branch we just did the step before. Let's take a look. All right, we have stitched that tack down line, as you can see there. Now again, this is just something that can be easily pulled away from the edge there. If you used it, now would be the time to remove it, okay? If I have any extras uh, that I can't get out, then, um, I mean, you shouldn't have a problem, but if there's any remaining, you can just take a little water bottle and spritz it, okay? Now, you can see why having it a little bit larger than the branch itself is going to help because what I want to do is take my scissors and cut away all this extra fabric here. All right, so I'm gonna pull out some applique scissors. There's a lot of choices you have here in the Kimberbell scissor tin. Um, normally, we would probably go with a duckbill scissor and I could certainly do that. I'll tell you which one I like the most though, but uh, let's try it first with the duck bill. See what we think. Oh, well, I like it. It's working good. Okay. When I do um, cut away, when I cut away, when I cut away fabric um, using the scissors, um, what I want to do, because I'm a righty here, I'm going to pull my fabric taut with my left hand, and then I'm going to cut with my right hand. The more taut that you can pull that, uh, the better. So I also wanted to mention 
that I love having the duck bill portion towards the center of my appliques. I think that gives you a really nice, up close, clean cut. All right, so can continue to do that. Let's show you another pair of scissors that I like here. And that is, that is these ones here, okay? I love uh, these scissors of ours because unlike other uh, types of flexible scissors that are out there, ours have these elongated blades and we wanted to make sure that they were sharp from the base of the blade to the very, very tip. Uh, because they are flexible like this, it's also gonna reduce hand fatigue. I also like it's got this curved edge so it's not going to dig into my fabric. Uh, below and keep all the fabric up on top. So again, I'm gonna pull taut with my left hand, okay, and cut with my right. All right, you'll notice, of course, that I put this down on a flat surface. <laughs> How many of you, you can admit it, but after this you can't do it anymore, have tried cutting your appliques in your lap. Oh, please say it ain't so. <laughs> do not do that. I highly recommend you not doing it that way. Always lay your hoop on a flat surface like a table um, and not your lap because we do not want to take the chance of this popping out of the hoop, do we? All right, and you're just gonna have a much better experience and clean cut. All right, so we're just gonna continue this process of going all the way around that branch. All right, and where you know it, we're ready for our next step. Okay, I have cut this around, take a look. There we go. Now, the next thing I wanna do is actually iron this, okay, oh, fuse this if you, if you will, there we go. Now I want to take an iron to it because it is the shape of the branch and I want to make sure that all of those pieces are gonna stay nice and flat for my next step. So I'm gonna take it right here and just give it a good press for eh, about 10 seconds is all you need. It doesn't have to be too much um, beyond that, you just want that to adhere for all those layers to fuse together. All right, all right. Oh yes, perfect. All right, now I can place it back onto the machine where it will do a decorative stitch on top. And what I love about what our digitizers did with this is that they wanted it to look like a tree branch, right? So they digitized it to look like a tree branch. You'll see here what I mean in just a minute. Now some of you might ask, okay, now what thread? What thread color do I use? Do I use a dark brown? There's different shades of brown in there. Do I go dark? Do I go light? Do I try to match? You know what? There's no right answer. For me, you know, I look at it and go, ooh, I really want to see the detail. Okay, I want to see the, the, the branches. So I might go a little bit lighter in thread color on this type of fabric because I want to see the detailed stitches. But maybe in another place on the design, I want it to blend a little bit more. So I would choose a thread that was closer to the color of fabric I was stitching on. Again, it's totally up to you. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next step, which is our detail stitches of the branch. All right, let's take a look at the decorative detail on that branch, shall we? Oh, I'm so excited. All right, take a look. Here we go. We've even got a knot, <laughs> what we'd call a wood knot, right? We've got a wood knot right in there. Um, and then we've got all of the different lines just kind of going in and out. It's beautiful, beautiful. All right. The next step is we are going to do two leaves. Now there are three leaves total. This next step just does two of them right now. So I'm gonna place that back on the machine. 
and I'm going to also switch out my thread color. So, of course, I'm going to keep my leaves green, All right? So I'm going to place the green on here and stitch that out. Now, you know, you might be wondering about when to change the thread colors and such. It will explain that in the directions uh, when we would suggest, but certainly uh, this initial, uh, what we would call the, the placement outline, is not really seen in the design. So on a placement outline for this particular project, you'd be okay with just about any color thread. I'm just gonna go ahead and change green now because then I won't have to do it later, right? So here we go. Let's stitch out two green leaves. All right, so as you can see here, I've stitched the outline of two green leaves. Now I'm ready to play with some fabric again. So I'm going to peel off my paper. Remember, I mentioned that you don't have to take this off the bed of your mach machine uh, each time. Sometimes it's easier just to keep it on there and just place your fabric over it. Again, making sure that you've got a uh, well, little bit of extra on all of the sides. Okay, You just want to completely cover this area. Now, one of the reasons why, oh, this is a, a good example here. I'm gonna show you something here. I'm gonna show you uh, what can happen sometimes with uh, this double-sided fusible web. You go to peel it off and it didn't stick to the other side and you're going, wait a minute, there's no sticky on that other side. That's okay, no big deal. All you gotta do is just take it to your ironing board, give it a little press of heat, dry heat, okay, let it cool down a little bit, woo, woo, woo. and I bet when I try it again, all right, oh, here we go, now that's it. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so it's got some stick, I'm gonna place it down on top. Now the, the other thing that I wanna mention right now is that, you know, we? I said that there's little uh, fingers, if you will, lots of in and out curves that you see. Um, here we go. Doing that and having this repositionable allows you to do some tucking and lifting and, you know, placing interlocking uh, of fabric. So I could lift this side up. I don't know how well you can see that. And then we can take this one and tuck a little bit of it underneath. And now those uh, pieces have interlocked, so to speak. So you could do that too. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. I know I keep saying that, but it's so true. And that's what makes it, I think, especially enjoyable, right? Okay, got another piece. I'm ready. I'm gonna stick that right there and let's go. Oh, what do I want here? Okay, let's go with, well, let's do this one. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is fun. Okay, there we go, I'm ready. Now I can place that there. Ooh, so I used four different shades there. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Boy, if you wanted to, I was just thinking about this. Well. You could actually make a really large piece and cover both of them at the same time, but each leaf is gonna be a little different, right? That's what makes it more fun. Um, I'm gonna pull something over here. So layering, uh, one on top of the other, interlocking uh, the fingers of each piece, um, all those kinds of things just make it absolutely uniquely yours. All right, I'm gonna use a larger piece here to cover. Oh, there we go, I had another one. It's that same fabric, so I bet I didn't put enough heat on it before. All right, let's try this again. Woo, cool that baby off. <laughs> ah, there it is. All right. And having them go different ways and, oh, there's just 
different directions. You can have them go horizontal, vertical, it does not matter. There we go. All right, I cannot wait to see what this turns out to be like. So it looks a little funky right now. That's okay, that's what you want, right? I'm actually going to take a piece of my water soluble topping from Kimberbell and place it over the top just because I can see that that might get caught on my machine and I don't want that to happen. So I made sure I've got a piece large enough to cover all the area. And I'm gonna just use some Kimberbell paper tape, of course, to make sure that that topping stays in place. Let's go ahead and do our next step, which is the um, tack down line. All right, so we've done our tack down stitch and now I actually do want to remove this from the machine because we've got to tear away a couple things. We've got to actually take away this uh, topper here. Again, it is wash away, so if there's any extra pieces that you couldn't get out, no big deal. It looks like I'm getting it here. Okay. I am actually really glad I put this down because I can tell already that this piece would have flipped up had I not. So that is a good thing. All right. But I want that to stay nice and flat in just a minute. <laughs> Don't press it yet with your iron, okay? Or else you're gonna have some funky looking leaves. We wanna cut away all that extra fabric. So I'm going to, I'm gonna use uh, these flexible ones here. Again, pull taut and get as close as you can to that edge. Now, our digitizers went around uh, each of these edges, uh, I think it's uh, maybe a triple bean stitch as I can see. And that's really nice, not only for decorative purposes, but it's also gonna prevent you from um, accidentally cutting any of that, that those stitches away that you don't want to, right? All right. Okay, I have just cut the extra fabric away from the leaf and now it's time to press it for about 10 seconds because that's gonna lay all the layers nice and flat, okay? Once again, there was this little piece that didn't get caught on um, one of the outlines and that's okay because it's going to stay pressed down once I uh, put this heat on it for, like I said, maybe about 10 seconds is all. And uh, then we'll take it to the machine, we'll do the top stitch, and everything is gonna lay nice and flat, but it's gonna have that beautiful look of collage. And I'm just, oh, I'm squealing right now because I'm so excited about how these leaves turn out. And that's what it's gonna happen to you. You're going to do the eggs, you're gonna do the bird's nest, you're gonna do the birds. I can't wait to do the birds here because those are gonna be such beautiful colors to work with and it will be a surprise to you what it ends up looking like, right? All right, okay, I put that down, ironed, I'm ready for my next step. Let's do it. Oh my goodness, okay, once again, it's just one of those moments when you take a look and you just go, oh, I'm so excited, <laughs> because look at the veins in uh, those leaves. I just love the extra stitching on it. Uh, it's just it, it's something that just adds a little something to those leaves or to all of the designs on here um, that our digitizers do and they do it so well. So uh, very excited about this. Uh, the next step I believe is the nest and I am going to, you know, oh no, it's actually the next leaf and then we get to the nest. Now, here's what I want you to, to think about. Visualize with me, okay? And you can use your instructions, of course, your step-by-step -step directions uh, to go through the rest of this process. But you're going to do the same series of steps. So the first thing, of course, as we know, is that placement um, outline. It will tell you exact, or it will show you, rather, exactly where your fabrics need to lay. 
okay? And once you've done that, you then take all your fun pieces of fabric. Ooh, so much fun. And then you're going to layer them one on top of the other or overlap them just a little bit. Okay, uh, you don't want to get too thick of layers, uh, so I wouldn't recommend maybe more than you know doing one or two right right on top of each other. But if you overlap them just a little bit, and interlock the fingers, uh, maybe lift one end and tuck another under, just cover that entire placement stitch. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to then take it back to your machine. If you want, you can put some water-soluble toffing on top. Stitch out the rest of uh, the tack down line. Okay, again, it's just like the same outline you did before. Then remove it from your machine, place it on a flat surface, remove the topping if you did it, and cut away any of the extra fabric that goes beyond that place or the tack down line. All right, once you've done that, Give it a good pressing, about 10 seconds is all it needs. I like to put up, uh, do that with a dry iron, then take it back to your machine and stitch that with those fun decorative details. All right, you'll continue that process until the entire thing is done. And wow, what a work of art you have just created. Take a look at these pictures. Oh my goodness. Look at what is in these photographs. It's gorgeous, isn't it? This is something that is a true lifestyle piece for your home. It's just going to up your home game uh, with the, the beautiful decor that you can create with your embroidery machine. I absolutely love the look and I think you will too. You know, if this is your first time trying collage applique, uh, you know, and you're going, oh, I'm not sure if that's for me. Well, you could certainly do one piece of fabric down like a normal applique piece would be. But I want to encourage you to jump right in and try something you've never done before and do collage applique, all right? So that's one look to it uh, with, with the, the design centered in the pillow. In fact, in these pictures right here, we actually use the nine by 14 size uh, design onto the pillow blank. And as you can see, we centered it. But I want you to take a look at your directions in the very back of each set of directions. You're actually gonna have some different ideas for various placements on your pillow. So if you want your, your pillow maybe in the right hand corner or maybe a smack in the center, or you want lower you want it maybe somewhere entirely different there are some suggestions on in the back of your directions as you see in these pictures here we've done it all different ways here's another look at where we took the smaller size this is a five by seven size and we put it in the bottom left hand corner of this pillow blank isn't that gorgeous by the way oh, that's our gray linen pillow blank here we took a little bit larger of the fabric uh, design. Um, and I think this might have been the six by 10 size. And we just put it in the bottom right hand corner of that one. And this is on our mist linen pillow cover. And then this one is on our navy color. And look how beautiful that turned out. Right smack in the center of this lumbar pillow. So lots of ideas. Um, we cannot wait to see what you do with it. Now, Bless This Nest was not the only design found on this CD. There are two additional designs. I'm gonna go back here to find them for you because you've gotta see. Ah. There are some home designs and some more floral designs. I'm gonna place them right there as I grab the next one. Stay with me here, you're going to love it. Look at this one. We took that same pillow blank cover and then did this beautiful floral collage on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna toss that. There we go. And here we took, again, the same floral design, but did it in a different size, and we put it on the lumbar pillow instead. But be still my heart. Look at these golds and yellows that are blending together. It is gorgeous. And then we've got, of course, the extra uh, little machine embroidery designs um, that even extend beyond the applique. It's just so beautiful and stunning and uh, one of those scenes that you're going to be very proud of to show off in your home. 
So that's uh, another pillow design. And then let's take a look at the home design. Even with these letters, take a look at that. Oh my goodness, we've got the beautiful leaves here. We've got some images to show you as well. Take a look. Isn't it gorgeous? And my favorite, I'm gonna grab it right here. Stay with me, is oh, oh, the home on the uh, 18 inch pillow, I believe this is, 18 or 20 inch. This is the lint mist uh, linen. And oh my goodness, that looks like it was just one piece of fabric, doesn't it? But it's not. It's not. It is all kinds of collage yellows going on with a beautiful uh, green greenery below it. So just gorgeous stuff. I, I just want to give you the, you know, you can do this pep talk and tell you that, you know, if you jump right into something that you've ne never done before, it can be a whole lot of fun. And I encourage you to check out Emma's Collage Pillows. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. Have fun, and I can't wait to see what you're gonna make. Thanks.